Hey everyone, we're at Computex 2018 at the Noctua booth now, and I've basically taken their entire booth and put it in front of me here. Noctua has a ton of stuff for the show. We're going to go through about 50% of it. Most of it's on the PC side. A couple of updates on the Chromax line, uh, D15s, actually fan sizes for the new fan that everyone's been talking about. So we're going to go about all that today, along with a couple of prototypes that they've printed or they've uh, CNC milled. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's View 37 case. The View 37 focuses on highlighting custom PC builds with its full panoramic window and tinted front acrylic. In our thermal testing, the View 37 performed reasonably well when considering its looks focused build which is partly thanks to the airflow design and the removal of a bottom power supply shroud. For a balance of looks and performance, check the link in the description below for the View 37. So let's start with the Chromax line. Everybody is always making fun of Noctua for their fan colors. It's an old joke at this point. So they said, all right, you know what? Fine, we'll make a black fan. So they made a black fan. Everyone wanted the black fan. So Noctua ran into a problem where people are buying their coolers with the brown fans and replacing them with the black ones and you end up with just excess fans. So now they're going to be selling all the same coolers from the rest of the show. There are three of them, D15 is one of them, and uh, selling it just like the original, no changes to anything except it's all blackout. In terms of thermal performance, adding powder coating to it shouldn't really matter. You're talking less than one degree of difference. So if you're worried, if you're, if you're down in the comments already typing angrily about the performance, just stop because <laughs> uh, it's powder coated. It's a really thin powder coating typically the change in thermal performance is minimal. So basically if you wanted a complete blackout everything, blackout fan clips, blackout fan, blackout fins, blackout mounting points and mounting hardware, they're gonna be making them in the Chromax series. Pretty easy update there. Uh, other than that, a couple of updates on things like actually this cooler here behind me. So Noctua has a fantastic setup right now. It's I mean, we're not in a lab, so it's not perfect, but uh, these are benchtop power supplies. We've showed you them with our fan testing in our lab. So benchtop PSUs here, and then right here are just two mini chambers that are just acrylic chambers. So they have a D15, and they have the next generation U12 behind me. So uh, basically what Knox was showing is a 120 millimeter with the new fan and some redesign on the heat sink versus the D15 as we all know it. No changes to that one. Uh, between them, there's, they're both sitting on top of dummy heaters, so it's just like a plate, metal plate basically with a heating element in it. Pretty standard way to approach a thermal test for coolers because having a whole computer is way too many variables, can't really control it. So they just have heating elements in here, they're heated to the same temperature, uh, it's a more than 200 watt heat load. So it's a, it's a substantial amount of heat load. And then a K-type thermocouple reader behind me. So the K-types are hooked up to the plates. And right now it's 49.1 versus 48.7 degrees within variance. K-types have a, a, an error of 2.2 .2 degrees variance, perfect uh, error basically between them, manufacturing tolerances. So I don't know if they've calibrated, but either way, let's say they did. You're within a one degree of reason given it's a non-lab environment. So they've more or less achieved D15 performance with the new U12 with a 200 plus watt heat load. It's significant. It's sort of HEDT area, except maybe Threadripper 2 might be a bit higher at 250 watts, which I think this is pretty close to. So yeah, I, that's impressive. It's basically using new fans versus old fans. And then uh, in terms of the heatsink design, it's 37% more surface area. So it's fatter. That's where a lot of your performance comes from. It's got more dissipation area. And then the airflow, obviously, from the new fan helps out. So uh, that's a next generation U12. Don't have pricing or anything like that on it. It might be about $100 from what I'm told. It comes with two fans. But that's all I know right now. Hopefully launches before end of year for the next gen U12. It might be early next year but that's kind of what they're looking at right now. Other things that you might be interested in would be this. So this clear piece of plastic here in front of me is the new fan for the 120, except printed in 140 millimeter format or CNC, I should say. So uh, everyone's been asking about where's the 140s. From what I understand, it's not quite as simple as just scaling up. You could scale up a fan design. Noctua tells me that they're pushing for the most possible performance out of it, so they're more or less refactoring the design for every size that they make, hence taking so long to make 140. So things that have to change are curvature of the blades, uh, the account of blades, what's an optimal amount of blades on it, and material properties, material, uh, exact material should all stay the same from the 120s, so that's good. They get to carry over all of that R&D for years. Uh, it's just scaling up to 140 size so that it actually performs 
at, I guess, peak performance, trying to squeeze out every percent of improvement they can out of it. So this is coming. They've made prototypes of it. If you've wanted a 140, it's just it's not here yet. There's also a, a low profile version. So this is also 140. It's just thinner. Not much to say other than that. A couple other updates on coolers. Uh, the Redux line here is basically a slightly cheaper version of the normal line with a gray fan. So it's uh, reduced packaging, fewer accessories, drives down the MSRP. And that's the Redux NHU 12 which is coming out soon. And then this one here is a next generation 140 millimeter U-type cooler. So uh, we've talked about U14s before. I think the last time we talked about a U14 versus U12 was Threadripper probably, and, or uh, AM4 maybe. And with the U14, it's about 30% more surface area. So just like this U12 behind me, except not 37%, it's 30% more. And uh, I think they're going with new fans on it. So it'll be expensive because the new fans are expensive. Don't have a price yet, don't have a release date yet, but basically it's just a really fat U14 cooler with a new fan, like really fat. It's a substantial cooler. So that'll be new. And then the next gen D15 is also here in front of me, uh, also going to be using new, uh, the new fans and also a bit of changes. It's got one more heat pipe on it. Don't have any idea what the price is gonna be on that. And I think there's, there's one more to talk about here. This will only interest a few of you, I think, in our audience, but this is a C-type cooler. So this is a, a 140 millimeter C-type. It's a couple millimeters shorter than the previous one. That's the change for this current generation. And I think that pretty much covers all the Noctua stuff. So as always, subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnext. It helps out directly. Click the link in the description below for more information. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.